you know, if there's one thing, yeah, one thing that really grinds me down to a pulp in an annoying way, it's the issue of race. Simply because I think we characterize ourselves according to this thing so much to the point where we take it to heart we see ourselves racially we really do you know like you are watching a podcast slash vlog being done by a quote-unquote South African black dude and my thing is that the moment we racialize anything we negate the diversity of life because race as it is understood commonly and you get at me in the comment section if what I'm saying seems to be I don't know, beyond or maybe beneath the breadth of what you're used to. But it seems to me that we understand race to be this implicit, innate, natural thing of people's ethnic divisions. So for instance, we classify ourselves according to the cultures that we come from but what we don't notice is that what race has done to us is that it tries to place everybody into these neat biological boxes of hereditary so it tries to say that in the entire planet there are people who are classified as negroid Caucasoid, Malaysian, or whatever the fuck, and it tries to place rigid contexts where what you see is what you get. So if you see me and my skin tone is a certain level of brown and I happen to be from the continent of Africa, I must be black. Whereas there are people who probably are darker than me living in Asia, but they're not black, right? They're Asian. That's their race. My race is black, supposedly. And then there are people who live in Europe whose race is white. But the reality of it is way more murkier than the idea of race wants to simplify everything. I'm going to try to make this as succinct and as basic as possible. Race is understood as the distinct biological features of a people whose roots come from a certain place. That's a story. The story says in the beginning people were somehow one and they somehow spread into different parts of the world where they developed unique characteristics which make them who they are and separate them from everybody else and they just kind of ruminate from those places so it's this neat mythology of the fact that africans come from africa and we can associate them with this you know djembe drum beating primal energy shamanistic whatever and then Europeans are these people who come from some kind of enlightened, distinguished tradition, um, let alone Stonehenge and all these other rock paintings. And then all of a sudden, Asians are Orientals who, you know, practice Zen, Buddhism, meditate, and are people of enlightenment. These boxes are the reason why we still divide ourselves. And if there's anything I hope to do in this episode, is to just fucking annihilate this idea of race altogether. Especially identify with it. Because first and foremost, life is way too hybridized, divergent for race to actually be a thing. I mean, do you realize how many migrations intercontextually, culturally, quote unquote tribally, that have happened between people where the lines of skin tone and language blur too much to fit people into these boxes? Do you realize why there can't be a Bantu migration? Because the word Bantu is a colonial word created by European settlers who tried to group 
every indigenous person in the southern tip of Africa according to some kind of mythological journey to the south which didn't happen because the word Bandu just means people it just means people it is not some kind of cultural name the way these things emerge doesn't happen where a person goes we shall be called this you are you often notice that a lot of these so-called titles for tribes and cultures are actually just regular words that they used to define the person so they were talking about something broader than them they were talking about this thing we've come to call human so in other words if we think that the bantu is different from the homo sapien that is different from the person that is different from the human we're actually falling into the same colonial illusion because all of these terms are trying to get at the root of something common personhood agency sentience being a focalized being that is conscious in a world where your identity is inextricably related to other identities or as is it is said in the past that i'm from umtungu umtunga bandu a person happens in the context of relationship that's what that means so you cannot separate who you are from the rest of the world and i mean the rest of the world you can't have a full stop where your ancestry begins with your immediate lineage and stops at a certain point where does it go from there we're all interconnected but before i rile too deep into this i'm raving about all of this because a south african vocalist by the name of tyler has gone viral and really you know made most of the western world fall in love with her because of her recent single water and just the critical success and acclaim that it's having mainly because of the fact that behind the scenes there's real intricate politics to the label that's pushing her but also it's a really good fucking song and she's got a great voice she's got a aesthetic that fits into the mold of the times and she speaks to a generation that accepts the sound i mean it's a good feeling that resonates with the trends that are congruent and dominant today it's a little bit of that afrobeat feeling piano i mean in other words it represents this kind of new global african youthful sound that's making its way into a lot of the western world and inspiring people of the diaspora um in the very same way that we do boys and other africans in the americas were inspired by the resonating cultures that came from the land that they were taken from we are witnessing an extension of that mirroring happening through the arts media and culture tyler's success is not some kind of market ploy not fully at least it's also a result of the fact that africans in the diaspora love seeing an expression of their origins manifested in a modern contemporary context but at the very same time the africans in the continent love seeing themselves accepted and embraced by what feels like the quote unquote global world which is really just the west so when those two things happen at the very same time that's what's called fame at least on the global context so as a result Tyler stands at the tip of the media sensationalism and she decides to do something interesting. In a moment where she is talking about herself and her origins, she says she doesn't identify as black and that she's colored. <gasps> that's that's the literally my version of how the rest of the world outside of south africa must have felt when she said the shit because i mean she looks black so how the fuck could she not be black and of course the results were tantamount to like controversy beyond what can be understood so i'm going to try to kind of summarize this because i've seen a lot of takes and a lot of these takes seem to come from 
what I call the common misconception about blackness. Which is, blackness is some kind of ethnic identity. That black is a skin tone. And therefore, if you are at a certain spectrum of brown, you are black. I know that doesn't make sense, but supposedly it should. How the word black is supposed to refer to people of a darker hue of brown. You know, then why don't we just call ourselves dark brown? Because it doesn't have anything to do with the skin color, damn it. That's what I'm trying to say. Blackness is not the delineation of skin tone. It is the political negation of a person's life. It's the ultimate otherness. It severs you from everything you are and turns you into nothing but a subject and a tool for imperialism as labor. So let's go into this idea. In case you haven't noticed, everybody on the freaking planet is a shade of brown. I mean, this is just facts. Like, there are no white people to be literal. There are no black people to be literal. I mean, we've seen the colors. You know what white looks like. You know what black looks like. These aren't even actual colors. Black is the absence of color, it's complete darkness, it's void. Whiteness is the complete dissolution into a bright spectrum which dissolves all color. So these are really opposite ends of how color dissolves. And philosophically, that's why they're termed like that. Because the ideology is this. Whiteness is the brightness which illuminates the whole world. Blackness is the darkness which sinks the whole world into deep darkness. This is what these things mean. To be white is to be some kind of progressive pillar of the illumination of the world. To be black is to be some kind of stagnant, rigid, outdated, archaic idea of everything that the world should not be. These things have nothing to do with how people look. They're literally philosophies created to classify people according to their usefulness in the world. When Europeans colluded together on the product of colonialism and created whiteness, they disavowed their own culture for a second to claim the white label because it's the most convenient thing ever. Whether you're Portuguese or Spanish or German, if you label yourself as the light of the world, you give yourself the permission to enter into places with the confidence that you deserve to be there because you are the one that can correct everything that's happening to a world which is black. And this is why Africa had to be called the dark continent. Because if it's dark, then it needs a light. So we needed the boats and the colonialism and the establishment of industry and all of this to come into our lives because we were dark without it. We were black without it. So this is very, very important because if we understand blackness in its true political sense, then we realize that this idea of black as conscious, black as beautiful, black as excellent, that the pop culture has tried to feed to us by shifting blackness to some kind of identity, then we'll see that it's part of the whole trap. How is it part of the whole trap? Whiteness needed the black because in order there to be some kind of innate light that the world has to follow, there has to be a darkness that the world has to stray away from. Being black is being the darkness that the world tries to escape. Being white is being the light that the world always seeks. This is as simple as that. Blackness is not about jazz or hip-hop or you know pop culture slang blackness is invisibility it's annihilation it's destruction and it has been commercialized as some kind of pop swag but that's not being black it is the expression of 
certain African features. It is the expression of a people who come from diverse aspects, but it is not blackness in and of itself. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit more simple to understand. Tyler, a South African who comes from a context where she has lineages that stem from Zulu to India and lives in a world where people who speak a particular language, which is called Afrikaans, were historically designated and separated from other indigenous people of the southern African continent tip rather area because the people of European descent wanted to create and sow division by giving those who come from bonds that stem from their raping of indigenous people or any context which led to this background of people who then have these two roots European and African had to be separated in order for there to be a distinct line between those who were pure dark black and those who are a little bit mixed but this is this is where it becomes very sinister because this is the whole colonial project colonialism tries to treat skin tone as some kind of reflection of purity that the darker you are the dirtier you are the lighter you are the more purer you are and this is where ideas like the one drop rule come in this is how certain people in the African diaspora become labeled as mulattoes this is how we get the idea of the lighter that you are the more closer to proximity with whiteness that you are and we still have this idea entrenched in our psyche with light skin bias and dark skin bias and this is how we still think that light skinned people are closer to success than dark skinned people it's just an extension of this idea of the black as the annihilation and the white as the progress so now Tyler a light skinned African woman who has been taught her whole life that she is not black because she thinks black is some kind of ethnic term for really dark skinned people who come from certain traditional lineages proclaimed that she is not black simply because of her misunderstanding of the idea of black and African Americans and other Africans in the diaspora rile out because of their misunderstanding of the term black because they think he's throwing away some kind of ethnicity when the truth is curiously somewhat simple but complex to understand it's this both Tyler as a light-skinned African woman and the people responding to her are not exempt from the experience of being suppressed by the colonial impulse if you are as dark as Tyler or as dark as I don't know seal you still experience a certain level with a line of what you are can never go beyond a certain point and this is how whiteness traditionally had to open itself up to people who were not that light in hue case in point people who came from quote unquote Jewish descent Portuguese descent Irish descent I mean this is not as simple as saying you look a certain way so you are this it's understanding that if you could pass off as a person light enough to be considered Eurocentric then you can be white but come on Tyler has features which could never be misconstrued as Eurocentric at best she is you know vaguely Asiatic but she will not be white and if she's not white then she's black and that's it if the way you look cannot even pass off as related to the Eurocentric identity you're black so let's take somebody like a logic the rapper who claims his parentage which comes from afro-american root but really just could pass off as a European 
quote unquote a white guy. He could enter into spaces of power that a Tyler couldn't because if he just kept his mouth shut about his origins, they could pass him off as any other white man. And this is what I'm trying to get to is that the game of complexion plays into the politics of hereditary and Eurocentricity against the rest of the world. So, Tyler, as a fellow South African, the term colored is embroiled in a lot of controversy because it's a colonial project that was made to separate Africans from other Africans by virtue of their European ancestry. But the identity is not one that places itself in a position where one could truly empower themselves because quote-unquote colored people are in a position where they can either be ethnically colored and therefore also be politically black or they could be ethnically colored and therefore they cannot be politically black and what that means is the colored identity in South Africa is there to be a mark of anti-blackness. So, Tyler's black, politically. Ethnically, she's something a little bit more complex because we can't reduce people to these boxes. But blackness and whiteness are the binary product of a Eurocentric colonial force which tried to designate people as either subject to annihilation or the object of progress. So I hope you understand as I separate and try to explain to not only my South African audience but to the rest of the world we are really part of this binary that has been set up by a Eurocentric structure that spread itself across the world and now tries to infiltrate and water down these concepts through pop culture and so lastly I want to explain the difference between political blackness and this false commercial blackness that we ingest from the media pop culture is largely a result of the American media phenomenon and as a result, it uses cultures that dominate in terms of their appeal to sell the aspiration of capitalist settlement. I am going to make this, or try to make this, comprehensible by saying people of African descent come from cultures which have rich, rhythmic, rich, explicit sense of vibrancy. So as a result, everywhere in the world that people of African descent have settled, they have creolized, which simply means that they have adapted themselves to the environments while still maintaining fragments and vestiges of their origins. And these very same fragments of their origins are what has created these interesting slang, rhythms, moves, dances, music, culture, fast forward into modern mass media where we move from jazz ultimately to hip hop, coming from rock and roll and it's all been dominated by people of African descent and in the limelight what you will hear is black culture black people, black lives, when really this is more to do with Africa than blackness because Africa is about the earth of the so-called landmass which these people stem from but blackness is the political division that they've been placed under which erases all of those diverse cultures whether you are Igbo or Hausa it, it, it tries to erase your Setswana-ness, your utembu -ness. It tries to erase all of these very distinct lines of migration and lines of flight where people get to 
attach themselves to the imagination or the imaginal realm of totems, of myths, of archetypes, and it's just black. That's all black. I mean, no! And this is my problem with African Americans homogenizing the diverse African experience is one thing. I mean, I love Beyonce's take on African expression on the Lion King and she does her thing but it really it's part of that whole primal mythology of just every culture in Africa is one culture and therefore they're all black people it's why African Americans refer to Africa like it's a country hey I'm going to Africa where in Africa are you going Uganda Zimbabwe Angola Mali Zaire where you going South Africa Benin Togo Burkina Faso I'm going to Africa. You dissolve the diverse people to relate to this mythological idea that it's just all Africa. No. Africa is the gateway and portal into so many diverse experiences which sometimes do not really get along. And that conflict is part of that engagement. And I think African Americans, because they have been stripped of this diversity claim blackness as a singular tool to enter into their African heritage and I understand that but it's very important to know that black is not some kind of cultural force it's a tool of negation so be very 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 careful to not confuse your search for Africa with your search for black Black is what was placed upon you. It's what you were called. You didn't choose it. It's what was given to you to make you invisible. Africa is what lives from you. It's what you can pursue. So this is the difference when somebody says they're African to when they're saying they're being black. Shout out to Dead Prince. This is how we're able to see that it isn't so much black lives matter. Because if we understand that blackness is a not annihilation which means it's death then there's no such thing as a black life because to be black is to die in the face of the world so rather African lives are what exist so I mean I'm saying a lot but in relation to Tyler and her just breaking a musical record in Billboard which now overshadows Miriam Makeba who as an artist was conscious of her African identity having come from Africa and was in the diaspora exiled from her own country trying to conscientize Africans who were dispossessed and connect them with Africans in the continent here we are today with Tyler who has beaten her record in terms of being the first African woman and yet she doesn't even identify as black for me, it's sad because it just shows how far we've come in the lack of awareness of what these terms mean. So if you can understand anything from this rant I'm doing throughout this whole episode, it is that African is the term which locates us to the diversity of experience in the continent. Black is severing us from our essential being into a realm of non-existence and a realm where we are nothing but the subject to white to white power so those two things must not be confused Tyler is very much part of the black experience because as she dances and talks about water all of that is just part of the capitalist project so she's very black and the coloredness of her identity is part of a colonial tradition and now I know a lot of the people in Cape Town and in other places are going to get at me and please do because ask yourself what does colored really mean in the South African context because we know what it means in America it's just a synonym for Negro for nigger which is still necro death it's the same residual relationship with the loss of agency 
I'm VJ the brother from the ancient mother and we are still living in a white world that feeds off of the black power. Therefore, if you understand where you fit in in the context of the colonial capitalist project, you'll understand that there's a very, very, very definite difference between identity and the political subjecthood that we are all under. I mean, you can't really conclude all of this in one episode, but this was an attempt to at least raise that fundamental distinction. Talk to me in the comment section. This is very vast and diverse because it intersects with critical race theory and all these other ideas of what it means to be black and white. Um, I know we have people in our subscriber base who identify as both black and white. And I really want to, I want you to get at me. Because this is a constant engagement with our place in the world. As a matter of fact, our place in the universe. And it's been the Headspace, the most poignant podcast in Africa. Not for blacks or for whites, but for the people.